brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we welcome all the family of the Bethlehem Presbyterian Church to worship and praise God together this morning. Welcome English speaking, Nua speaking, and Korean. Now, Bible reading for today is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses from 1 to 37. This is the Word of God. So now let us listen to the Word of God with a humble heart. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just to say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning. When God created the world until now and never to be equaled again, if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At the time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, oh look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and the false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days following that dis distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give it light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At the time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. 
heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn, if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Brothers and sisters, the title of the sermon today through the passage is what does the end come? What does the end come? A few years ago, someone I know visited Dubai in Arab Emirates and was surprised while looking at the greatness of the city built in the desert. So were Jesus' disciples in today's passage. They were amazed and envious of the temple in Jerusalem. So they said in verse one, look teacher, what massive stones and buildings, isn't that great? Then Jesus said, Jesus replied in verse two, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. We can see whatever has left God, no matter how beautiful and glorious, will eventually fall. Therefore, we must take our lives seriously because what Jesus said was fulfilled about 40 years later in AD 70. We needed to humbly listen to Jesus Christ. From the passage, we have two questions. I'd like to ask you two questions from the passage. When will Jesus, the first one is this, when will Jesus come again? It is the first thing that people today want to know about. In verse three and four, it says, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent uh, buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Then verse three and four, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, and verse 4, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus' disciples showed their curiosity in the prophecy in verse 2. Today, people are interested in when the end will happen. So people try to find out the exact date by doing their own research. William Miller predicted the second coming of Jesus between April 21st, 1843, and March 21st, 1884, but failed to hit. And Charles Russell said that Jesus would return invisibly in 1874, build the kingdom to be seen on earth in 1914, and returned to be seen on earth in 1918. And this prophecy was also wrong. His pulpit, Rutherford, revised several times, including 1925 as the end of the year, and 1966 and 1975 
but they were all wrong. Thousands of people predicted the end, but they were all wrong. Such prophecies will continue to be wrong. The reason why appears in the text today. In verse 33, it says, No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Only the Heavenly Father knows the time of the end. How can humans know what angels in heaven do not know, or even the Son does not know? A man said he was God, and that he would live forever, but suddenly died of a heart attack. How do we know the time of the cosmic end without knowing when our personal end is? Therefore, we must abandon our obsession and curiosity about the end date. We do not know the exact time of the end, but we can know the signs of the end, like verses 28 and 29. Verses 28 says, Now learn this lesson, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Today, we will look at only a few of them. First, in verses 7 and 8, When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against the kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. People talk about globalization, but the world is becoming more fragmented. Conflicts between peoples, religions, and tribes are getting worse. If there is a war in one place, countries around the world take part in the war. Like in World War I and World War II and Korean War and the Korean War. There were about 200 earthquakes in the 16th century and 2,200 earthquakes in the 20th century. A UN report stated that it is doubtful if there has ever been a state of this serious hunger in human history throughout the world. The sign of the end has already begun, and the signs are spreading all over the world. What is clear is that these signs clearly show that we are in an era of the end. Second, in verse 10, he said that the gospel must first be preached to all nations. The gospel has been preached to all nations, but brothers, there are still too many nations, tribes, and people who, who still do not know the gospel of Jesus Christ for their salvation. Therefore, the church must preach the gospel of Jesus, preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ. These days, with the development of communication devices, Missionaries who create new languages and translate the Bible in remote areas now translate the Bible with the help of scholars in real time. However, no matter how advanced science is, mission and evangelism is done through preaching the gospel. 
Just as God preached the gospel through Noah and Joseph's suffering in life, and through the ministry of John the Baptist, many people of the Lord today are devoted to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people around the world, even during suffering. If we look at it like that, we can clear, clearly see that we are in the end times. Third, in verse 21, It says, At the time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. There are many self-proclaimed Christs in our day. All over the world, they sh shout out that they are the Messiah. Christ and the Savior and deceive people. They say, I'm the Lord, I'm the Savior, believe me. People are deceived by those lies. It was the same in Asia Minor in first century, but today these self-proclaimed Christ make many people go the wrong way. Looking at it, we can see that we are in the end times. Fourth, verses 9 and 13 say that Christians suffer. Verse 9, you must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And 13, all men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Persecution against Christians is now a worldwide phenomenon. More than 100,000 Christian people are killed per year, every year, because of the name of Jesus Christ in their hearts, because they believe in Christ Jesus as their Lord and, and their Savior. And more than 200 million Christian people are persecuted and, and hated in this world because they confess that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and the Lord and the King, because they never deny that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and the Lord and the King. The suffering of believers and Christian churches is ongoing. Looking at these sufferings, we can see that the end is near. The second question from the passage, arising from the, uh, the passage, is this. How should we live in this end era? There are two reactions to this. And one is extreme escape. People try to find a way to escape or, or sell their property to give as an offering for their salvation to their false Christ, to their false teachers and leaders. Some rich people are now building underground shelters. But the Apostle Paul said, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses from 1 to 3. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supported to have come from us, 
saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. The other is apathy. They think it's foolish to think about the end time. But this is a foolish attitude. The end is certain as is death. I don't know when I will die, but just death is certain. I don't know when the end is, but the end is certain. Jesus Christ our Lord said in, in Revelation chapter 22 about his coming three times. Behold, I am coming soon. Behold, I am coming soon. Yes, I am coming soon. So my dear friends, be prepared for this end. How do we prepare it? The first preparation is to do your best in your present life. The present life is a life given by God. Verses 33 and 34 says, It says, be on guard, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Doing your own job is our deserving attitude. Paul said, surely you remember in 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9, he said, surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. They made tents during the day and night and preach the gospel at night. Jesus Christ walked during the day and filled himself with prayer at night. Brothers and sisters, what God has entrusted to the church and Christian believers is to preach the gospel by walking day and night. A high school girl heard that Jesus would come very soon from a sermon at, at church. So she thought it's worthless to study. She just waited for the end of the world. And later, she failed to get good marks on her exam. Doing our best in our present life and preaching the gospel of Jesus to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth is our task today. We need to be faithful to the task given by the Lord God in our present time. Not only for our own sake, but for the glory of God. And the second preparation is to, is to keep watch. Verses from 35 to 37, it says, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. We do our best for the present work given to us. But at the same time, we must wait as the gatekeeper looking forward to the day Jesus comes. As we all know, Noah waited for God's day 
making the ark for 100 years. Abraham traveled looking at the land that God will show. And Paul, while suffering, looked at the glory to come. For us, brothers and sisters, Christian believers, the end is a blessing. Revelation chapter 21, verses from 1 to 5, it says, Then I saw a near heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a, as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or moaning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Dear brothers and sisters, the word of God regarding the coming of Jesus Christ again is the true. And we all need to believe it. Dear friends, we will receive a new heaven and a new earth as gifts. We will have the new Jerusalem it is because God has promised. Therefore, dear friends, let us say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The disciples looked at the glory of the temple in Jerusalem and were amazed, saying, Lord, look at that great temple. Look at the great stones. Look at the great city. Look at the great things and great glory in this world. But Jesus Christ our Lord said, instead of the glory made by men's hands, look at the temple that God would give as a gift to all believers through his son Jesus Christ, the temple that God will build. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, let us remember the time is unknown, but the end is definitely coming. The day when Jesus comes is the end. Is the end. When does the end come? I don't know. But the day when Jesus comes is the end. As Jesus came 2,000 years ago, he will surely come again. First he came as the Savior, but now as the church. He will come and church in power and glory, judge everyone for good or evil. At the time, as Psalm, the book of Psalm 1 says, the wicked will not stand in the, in, in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Everyone who is the 
who has the evil life against the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ will be perished. But the comfort of the Holy Spirit will be given to those who do their best in the present time and wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.